So, um, Ruth and Amy are sisters and co-founders of the Hisby um, Food Kick. And Hisby is our newest supermarket, sustainable supermarket here in Brighton on York Place. Uh, and they've got a fantastic, inspiring story about how they started and why they started. And I'm sure they're going to explain that better than I can. So, round of applause for Ruth and Amy. Thanks. Thanks, Sarah. We can waffle on forever, but Darren's told us five minutes each and no yep. longer. So if you right. do want to ask any more about <laughs> his fee, then we're happy to answer questions in the break, but we're going to try and stick to the subject of being a social uh, entrepreneur. So I think uh, these are the two tweets we came up with. Yours? So my tweet, for me, being a social entrepreneur means I get to use my business skills to do something positive for my community every day. And I said that being a social entrepreneur starts with questions. Is it how it should be? It's a bit of a plug of our brand, Hisby. What would make it better and what can I do? So I, I think that it all starts with asking those questions of the things that you see around you and uh, wondering how you can uh, be part of making it better. So that's what we said. Okay. So um, where it all began for me? Well, it all began for me with us growing up with no money. So um, we were really skint and, you know, struggling to afford the basics. And I remember from a very young age thinking um, I felt different to everyone else and I felt weird and I just wanted to feel normal. And I got this idea into my head very young that I needed to make loads of money. And so I got this picture in my mind um, of becoming a businesswoman. I fixed this picture in my mind. And I didn't really know what a businesswoman was at that age, but I had a feeling it was something to do with sitting in an office with loads of other people, having a team to boss around, driving a massive car and making loads of money. And, and so that's what I fixed my mind on at that age. And you know what it's like, you know, you work hard, you get your exams, you get a good job. That's the deal. So I did it. I worked on my GCSEs, got great results worked at A-level, got great results, went on to um, university to study international business, all the time with this, this dream and this vision in my mind of being a businesswoman and earning loads of money. And um, it started to happen. So after uni, after four years of studying international business, I was taken on by Unilever, which is a big global sales and marketing company. And I started working for them and I started being a businesswoman. And you know, at first, first few years in these companies, you do all the dog's body work, so that's what I did. But I worked long hours and I worked weekends and I worked really hard and I was starting to be a businesswoman. And uh, I got a promotion and I got another promotion and I got more money. And then an, another company came along and headhunted me, Sarah Lee, uh, and they were going to give me loads more money and a bigger car, so I went with them. And uh, all the time, you know, sticking to this, this picture in my head, which was coming true. And I remember the first time I sat in my office in Sarah Lee, I thought, I am a businesswoman. This is great. So head down, carried on. And for another eight years, worked really hard. And my day-to-day -day job was involving planning campaigns, doing campaigns, negotiating with buyers, um, selling stuff, trying to persuade senior management to do stuff, and uh, that was the job that I'd signed up for and trained for and had in my mind all of this time. And then I had a really horrible moment. Uh, I remember I was sitting in a lovely apartment in Spain, because I was an expat by them, on loads of money, uh, with a pool and a gym and lots of nice things, and it suddenly struck me that I was unhappy at work, and it was a deep feeling of unhappiness because I realized my heart wasn't in it and that's where it all began and I started thinking what kind of job would make me happy and I had to sit down and be honest with myself and think about it and I thought well actually I want a job where I feel like I'm having a positive impact on people and on, on the community and I'm connected to the community and I want a job where I love the people that I'm working with and I've got creativity and innovation and all the things that really make me come alive. And none of those things were in my current job. I was basically just doing it for the money without really realizing it. So I changed my picture in my head and I took businesswoman out and I put social entrepreneur in because I kind of realized through research and thinking about it that this what was what social enterprise was about. And I had this vision of starting up a business that meant something to me and that gave something th to the community and that was positive and that I could make money. I didn't need the money I was on, make m less money, but really do something valuable with my time. So um, that's what it's all about for me. Social enterprise for me is being able to take the skills that I can do and uh, use them for something that's positive and that makes me happy. And I would say to anyone here, do it for the love, not for the money. And um, good luck.
I'll get to this in a moment, this, this picture of a, a bag of coffee. Um, but I took a very different route to Ruth. In fact, we've always done things quite differently. We're sisters, we're similar, we sound alike, some people say we look alike, but we do things very differently. Um, so I didn't go and get the A-levels. I bombed out of school and got a crap job and carried on doing crap jobs and then they got a bit better. And then I found something I liked. I was involved in youth work and community work and forged a career in that, working for the Metropolitan Police and London Fire Brigade, Groundwork, the Prince's Trust. Loved it, did feel valued, did enjoy my role. Loved the third sector, despite all its little quirks. Um, and then my life changed massively. I started thinking about um, where I wanted to move to next, where I wanted to be very cool to Brighton, and I realised that the thought of going into another community role, of managing another youth project, of doing something like I'd been doing for that period of time, just wasn't, wasn't lighting my fire anymore. And I thought, OK, well, this, this is a real alarm bell. I need to think about what do I really want to do in life, because all I've just done is what I'm used to. And whilst I enjoy it, I was becoming a bit jaded. It's a lot of work working with young people, it's very hard, and you don't always feel as um, effective as you want to be. Um, so I started thinking about something else, and I'd been living in Manchester before I moved to Brighton, and I had come across this company, the Aromo Coffee Company, which was my first proper experience of what a social enterprise was. Um, this was a group of guys from the uh, Aromo region of Ethiopia who had come to Manchester to educate themselves, and to support themselves through that education, they had um, set up a business with their farmer family and friends in Ethiopia to sell uh, coffee. And they'd got it to this stage, looked fantastic. They were selling it through retail. Um, they were really doing very, very well. Great quality coffee, by the way. We sell it at the Hisby store. Of course we do, because this is where it all started. But um, so I was inspired by this story. I was inspired by the great product, the direct trade. It was the first direct trade coffee company. And I thought, well, that's something I could do in Brighton. That's something new. It would move me into a different realm. I could, uh, I could help these guys get known in a different area, a big Ethiopian community in Brighton as well. So I thought that was a good start. So I started selling this coffee just on the food markets, uh, set up a small company called Coffee with a Conscience, and I started selling this on the food markets and started talking to people about the story behind it and why it was important and realizing that actually it was a lot of people didn't understand the difference between fair trade and direct trade at that time maybe hopefully they do now i think they do um but a lot didn't even know what fair trade was or why they should support it so it got me asking questions it got me asking questions about uh, my other choices when i spend money somewhere am i really thinking about the people behind the product What's going on? Am I unwittingly supporting something that I don't agree with by living on the marina and shopping at Asda? Yes, I think it probably was. <laughs> so, um, so this got me asking all those questions, and I thought, well, if there's this much, if there's this much going on in just one product, coffee is. If there's this much corruption in just one product, then what else is going on and what else should I know about? And Ruth, at that time, came over to Brighton and spent some time with me, and we started talking about all these things. And at some point, in some conversation somewhere, we looked at this product and we, just, um, we went, well, it's just coffee how it should be, isn't it? It's just coffee how it should be, everybody getting a fair slice of the pie, great quality coffee, um, good price, and nobody's being ripped off, just coffee how it should be. And that was really uh, the catalyst for saying, OK, what else? What if we just take food? What else? And then we opened up this massive can of worms. And then we decided that now that we knew something about it, we had to do something to fix it. And that was when we started really thinking about how Hisby could be a force for good in food and help explain sustainability, help explain the choices behind our purchasing decisions. Um, and wrap that all up in a, a non-preachy way. And the intention initially was never to open a shop. That came much later when the penny dropped with us one day and we realised it's about putting all the good stuff in one place and helping people understand it and crucially making it cheaper. And it took two years. A lot of people said it couldn't be done. Um, but we've just come to the end of the first three months of trading. Um, we sell everything below the RRP. We beat supermarkets on price, on fruit and veg. 
all, all our meat, it's locally sourced, most of our veg is locally sourced. It's, there's lots of things to say about his beer. It's a long process to making it into what we thought it should be, what we, what the kind of supermarket that we'd want to shop at that supported these kinds of products but made it affordable for everybody. So that's where it started, really, asking questions, noticing and going, can I do something about that? Let's have a think. So on that note, all there is is potential. You know, if you look around you and you look at how it is and think about how it should be um, and work towards it, then the future is very bright. Thank you. Thank you.